Hey guys, so I'm interrupting video number three and four right now to show you a solution to my CSRF token issue. If you're part of the series, uh, currently right now, when a guest user checks out, um, a lot of times it's for some reason not creating that token on the first submission or when a user is checking out in incognito mode. So let me just show you what I mean. And I'll open up the website. So uh, as a guest user, if we go to incognito mode, and I'm gonna show you two solutions by the way. So one for a quick fix and another one that's gonna be a little bit more intensive but is probably the better solution until um, I go through and do a bunch of research and solve this. So right now when we have a product and I add it to cart and we go through this checkout process. So we go to the checkout page. Right now we're not generating a CSRF token. So when we go through this checkout process and submit some data, so I'm gonna do new user number seven here. When we submit the data, the post data is gonna require a CSRF token to process this in the view, and we're currently not getting that data. So for some reason in incognito mode, or when a user checks in for the first time, um, it doesn't create this all the time. So I've seen a few people have this issue. So we'll just go ahead and test it out. So we're gonna say new user at Gmail, and let's go through this process. So this is what a lot of people are seeing. They have a product, they go to continue, they go to make payment, and we're seeing this forbidden error right here, and that's happening because the CSRF token that we created in main.html, whenever we try to check out, this token right here that we're passing through in our post data is actually not being generated. So we're not actually creating a session and it's not sending it. So the first solution is gonna be a quick fix. So this one, because we're not sending data that's too valuable, we're just gonna create that view and make it CSRF exempt. So it's just gonna say that whenever post data gets sent to this view, we don't need a CSRF token. So I went to the Django docs and I'm gonna copy this. So from Django.views.decorators, we're just gonna put the CSRF exempt decorator above that view and it's gonna fix that issue. So if I go to my checkout view, I'll paste that in there and I'm gonna comment both of these out in video number five and then uh, eventually I'll come up with the best solution for this, but this should do it for now. So if we go to checkout, we add CSRF exempt. Now we're saying whenever data is sent to this view, don't worry about it, just let that data go in. And the reason why this is okay right now is because we're not actually sending uh, any credit card data or anything like that to our form. That's all being done with PayPal, so we're not really vulnerable to issues. And I actually think that needs to be the view that we're sending it to. So we're sending that to process order. So I'm gonna make the process order view CSRF exempt. So We'll add that import just above it. And this is the view that's given us the error. So now if we try this, if I save it and refresh, so let's try that one more time. We shouldn't see that error. We still have the item in our cart. So we still have those two items. Let's go ahead and do new user seven. So once that data submit, or submitted, we should be able to submit that without an issue, we clear the cart, and that order was processed. So we still don't have the token, but we were able to send it without one. So let's comment that out. And if I remove this, we're gonna get that error again. So the more secure way that's a little bit more labor intensive is to add a CSRF token into my form. I had a viewer point this out, and uh, this solution will definitely work. So what we're gonna do is add in a token just like we normally would to a form. So normally when we submit forms with uh, with Django and we create them with, uh, with the default Django way, we're just gonna do CSRF underscore token and then a token is gonna be generated for that form. So this token right here is an input field but it's just gonna be hidden. So that means in our JavaScript, we can get that token if I go down to just underneath form where we got the form, we did JavaScript document dot get element by ID. I just reset the CSRF token value that's gonna get submitted with our uh, post data. So what we do here, we just go form dot get elements by ID. So we get all the input fields and that token is gonna be the first input field. So we indexed it by the value of zero. We got the value of what that is and now I can console that out. So I just Console out new token, and before we submit it, we just wanna see it. So we don't have a token created in the cookies, but if we go to our checkout page, I'll just add a few items again, go to that checkout page, 
now we're seeing that token now it actually got generated um i don't know why that's happening but our new token is being generated from our form so now if we submit another user and go through that process we're able to submit it by grabbing the token from the form so it's not being generated by the Django cookies how it usually is and I'll figure that out and actually provide the solution but now our form is generating it. We changed the value so before we set this in main.html so we had that form right here if I go ahead and go into my headers or the CSRF token. So we normally create it right here but we're gonna get this value and we're gonna change it to whatever is in our form here. So if I scroll down we have our new token we reset the value to whatever was in that form. We save that, it gets passed into our post data right here. So that gets thrown in right here. So now if I submit it, uh, we should see everything work out just fine. So now if I go through that form, um, I need to make sure this is at Gmail and submit that, make payment. Now we got that token from the form and submitted it without having to use CSRF exempt. So that worked as a temporary solution and we're not sending uh, vulnerable data right now, but this is probably the better solution until I actually go and figure out what's going on. I need to do a lot of research on that, but uh, we'll see it eventually either in this series or a standalone video. So um, I hope that fixes it. If you're about to go into that video, uh, just be aware of what we're gonna see here. If you see that issue, go back to this video, see what I did and uh, decide which solution you want to use. So uh, I'll see you guys in video number five.